Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now I was surprised to learn that I have not yet done an Xbox 360 exclusives video and now I think is the perfect time to do it because I've noticed that some of the big retailers like GameStop seems to be phasing out the console in their stores. However, I want to mention a couple things before we begin here. Number one, I'm not going to really talk about some of the bigger titles, at least in this part one. I mean, I think most people know that Halo and also Gears of War came out on the Xbox 360. Also, I know that some of these games came out on Windows and Steam, but the point of this video is really for collectors who want to get the physical version, or maybe you just want to beef up your Xbox 360 collection. And then finally, I'm not saying that these are hidden gems. Yes, some of them are good, but really they're just all exclusive to the Xbox 360. Let's take a look. All right, let's go ahead and start with Ninja Gaiden 2. So in this game you play as Ryu, who is armed with ninja weapons and also lightning reflexes. Now some of you might remember that Ninja Gaiden Black was on the original Xbox, and that game was notoriously difficult. And uh, this sequel is no exception. This game is brutal and non-stop hack and slash. One thing you're going to notice about the sequel here is that they added the ability to just hack your enemies apart. This game is tough, but it's still a really good example of fast arcade action. I mean, it just feels awesome playing this game and building up your combo meter. Now, there was a game called Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 that was released for the PlayStation 3, but it's kind of a bummer because they had to reduce the number of enemies on screen to keep a steady frame rate. Also, for whatever reason, they reduced the blood and gore in that version of the game. So this is the unaltered original. Next up is a game called The Outfit that honestly I wasn't aware of until I started doing research for this video. I don't think it sold very well, but that's kind of a shame because it's actually not a terrible game. So this is a third person shooter with real time strategy elements. And you can kind of see that in the gameplay footage here. Now, this was set in World War II and developed by Relic Entertainment. They may sound a little familiar to fans on the PC because they created a fantastic space strategy game called Homeworld, and I guess this was their first console release. In this game, you control three different squad leaders as well as certain soldiers on the battlefield. You can also call in artillery, vehicles, and much more. Now, this is definitely not a realistic game, but that's okay because it's actually fun. I kind of felt like it was almost like A-Team, like you're in charge of the A-Team. It's got a little bit of that camp in there. Uh, really fun game, you know, not great, not perfect by any means, but it is exclusive to the 360. Oh boy, here is a game. <laughs> it's gonna turn some heads. So Oni Chambara, Bikini Samurai Squad. Whew, what do I say about this game? First off, let me say that the reason why this came into my collection is because my buddy Drunken Master Paul saw it at a GameStop and bought it just because of the cover. And I love him for that. He's so funny. But when I got when I got it home and I played a little bit, yeah. It's pretty dumb. So what is the game? Well, it is a hack and slash where you play as two sisters who basically just cut down endless zombies, but they look great while doing it. If I'm honest, actually, it's not entirely terrible. I mean, the hack and slash beat em up aspect of it does feel pretty satisfying and you can swap out the different sisters at pretty much any point, but should you own it? Eh, I mean, if you're stinking drunk some evening hanging out with your buddy and you want to play something really brainless, sure, why not? It's also worth noting that the Wii did get the official sequel. So if you like this game, look to the Wii for even more Bikini Samurai Squad and Zombie Killing. Next up is a game called Import Tuner Challenge. And this is another game I was not familiar with until I just started doing some research for this video. But 
to my surprise, I was actually familiar with the series. This is part of the Tokyo Extreme Racer series that came out on the PlayStation 2. I was like completely shocked. I had no idea because those are actually pretty decent, you know, budget racing games. And like those games, you have a full story mode as well as full customization of all of the licensed cars that you would expect. This game is very similar to like the Need for Speed games where you start off as a junior racer who then needs to move up the ranks to take out the better racers. You pretty much spend most of your time driving around Tokyo, flashing your lights to challenge other drivers and then racing to earn cash for better upgrades. If I'm honest, there's not a lot of reason to play this game, especially if you played all of the Need for Speed arcade racing games. But if you do like the Tokyo Extreme series, well, definitely check it out. At first glance, Over G Fighters may kind of look like a budget version of the excellent Ace Combat series, but you'd be wrong. Instead, this is actually a flight simulator with somewhat realistic controls and physics that ultimately feels a little empty and bland. Now, when this game first came out, it was a full $60, but most people felt like it was probably a budget title and really should have been priced that way. You know, hardcore flight simulators are very common on the PC, but on consoles, I think many gamers were probably expecting more of an arcade experience. And what surprised them is the steep learning curve on this one. It was definitely a turnoff for a lot of people. That said, if you like flight simulators that are a little bit more on the realistic side, you can pick this game up for as little as $5, sometimes even less. So definitely check it out. Next up is a Konami shoot 'em up called Otomadius Excellent. That is a spin-off of the Gradius series. Basically, you have a 2D side scroller shoot 'em up, but with cute anime girls. Now, each one of them represents a classic Konami ship like Gradius, Twin Bee, Salamander, etc. Now, while I do like the cute anime girls, I mean, it's it's kind of cool, I guess, but Overall, this game is disappointingly bland. Also, it's considered to be a little bit on the easy side, although I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but if you're really big into shooters like this, that may be a bit of a turnoff. The special edition I have here comes with a double-sided pillow, as well as an art book and soundtrack. So if you're a fan of it, it's definitely worth picking up. Overall, this is not a bad shoot 'em up but it's not the best on the 360 either. Oh, how I do love Katamari Damacy on the PlayStation 2. And this is Beautiful Katamari, which is the fourth game in the series on the Xbox 360. In this game, you still have all the wonderful characters of the previous ones, including the King of the Cosmos, the Queen, and of course you play as the Prince. And what you do in this game is very simple. You just roll around, picking up different size objects, then building up your Katamari or your ball, which gets bigger and bigger within the time limit. And as you get bigger, you can pick up other things that are bigger and then you grow it and then you grow it. And so you start off very small and you can grow to be the size of a city block or a continent. It gets crazy. It's worth mentioning that this was the very first game to actually support HD graphics. And that came to the Xbox 360, which was a bit of a surprise for a lot of people. This is definitely a fun Katamari game, but I remember when this game first came out, I was a bit underwhelmed. And it's not because it's a bad game, but it's simply because the series at this point was kind of running out of steam. We'd already played three of them previously and the formula was getting a little old. It's also worth noting that the PlayStation 3 got a version of this called Katamari Forever. Although that one is slightly different because it's actually a sort of best of all the previous versions, but it does include a few levels from this one as well. Next up is a really cool game called Tenchu Z. So this is a stealth game from the makers of Dark Souls. They're called From Software. You play as a ninja assassin, taking out unsuspecting guards and eliminating high value targets. Now this is the first game in the series that I know of that allows you to create your own ninja and then tailor those abilities to how you want to play it. 
This is also a large game with over 50 missions to complete as well as a ton of unlockables. I think my only knock against it is that it's not really the best looking Xbox 360 game, but it's very solid and has really challenging gameplay. As a matter of fact, I have an old roommate who used to swear that this was his very favorite 360 game. He probably still thinks that way. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about Perfect Dark Zero, which was a launch title for the 360 that has some people who love it and hate it, and they're probably both right. So you play as Joanna Dark, of course, and this is the official sequel to the N64 version, of course. And I think the thing about this game is that, you know, a lot of people were extremely excited about this when it was first launched because it was in development for five long years. I think people forget that, that people were hearing about this game because it was originally supposed to come out on the GameCube. But then of course, Microsoft very famously bought the developer Rare. And then I guess they switched it over to development on the original Xbox. That, that didn't quite happen. Then it was gonna come out on the 360, which it did. So expectations were sky high. So how is the game? Well, boy, this is a tough one for me to judge because I do think as a launch title, it's a pretty good one. But unfortunately, time has just not been kind to it. I mean, the graphics, they look okay now, but they definitely stutter every once in a while. They're not optimized. Also, the animation and story really feels dated. Thankfully, you can pick this game up for about $5 or less. It's super cheap. So if you're a fan of the series or you just want to complete your 360 collection, definitely check it out. The Forza series is very popular on the Xbox 360 and also on the Xbox One, but I want to focus on Forza Horizon because this seemed to just come out of nowhere and it's awesome. So like I mentioned, this is an arcade offshoot of the Forza Driving Simulation series. The way I describe this is kind of think Test Drive Unlimited, the open world aspect of it, but mixed in with a little bit of need for speed. This is a surprisingly great racing game with a fantastic open world to explore. As you can see, it has great graphics, also tight controls. I think probably my only complaint is I would like a little bit less electronic music, maybe a little bit more rock or metal, but you know, that's personal taste. Now, if you like this game, you're gonna definitely wanna pick up Forza Horizon 2, also on the Xbox 360. And then once you leap over to the Xbox One, well, you gotta get Forza Horizon 3, which is damn near a masterpiece. Here's something I was a bit surprised to find in physical form, that is the Sega Dreamcast collection. Basically, this is exactly what you think it is. There are four Dreamcast games included on this disc. You get Sega Bass Fishing, Sonic Adventure, Space Channel 5, and then also Crazy Taxi. Initially, I was racking my brain to try to figure out why this didn't come out also on the PlayStation 3. But then it dawned on me that, you know, Microsoft and Sega had a very strong relationship going back to the Dreamcast because Microsoft created the version of Windows that the Dreamcast ran, which is pretty cool. And then moving on to the original Xbox, Sega also supported that heavily. So this is probably why you have this physical version. That said, I don't think there's anything special about this collection and there's only four games, which is a little bit disappointing, but if you're a completionist, definitely check it out. And then I wanna talk about three RPGs that you can't play anywhere else. The first one I wanna mention is Blue Dragon. This game was released in 2007 and basically just think classic style turn-based Japanese RPG. This game is created by a Japanese developer called Mistwalker that was founded by the original creator of Final Fantasy. However, they had financial backing from Microsoft. Now, the reason why that's kind of important is because Microsoft struggled and frankly failed with the original Xbox in Japan. So when it came time for launching the 360, Microsoft knew that they needed to get Japanese developers on board. Specifically, they needed Japanese style RPGs for that market. And this game is the result of that. As for the game itself, well, 
I really like the graphics. I think the graphic style of it is pretty cool. The characters were designed by the guy who also created Dragon Quest, which is a huge bonus. But overall, the story's a little weak. The game is a little boring. Next up is a game called Lost Odyssey, which actually I enjoyed quite a bit more. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but when this game first came out, it was amazing to open up the case and see four dual layer DVDs in there. I mean, you knew this was gonna be epic. And like the previous game, this was also developed by Mistwalker, so it definitely has a Final Fantasy vibe going on, but I like the graphic style much more. And then we have an RPG called Infinite Undiscovery, which was also released around the time of the other two, but this time it was developed by Tri-Ace and published by Square Enix. This game is created by the people behind the Star Ocean and Valkyrie Profile series. It's a fun, fairly solid action RPG, but nothing truly groundbreaking. And that's really the problem with all three of these RPGs. While solid and well-made for the most part, they were just painfully average. I feel like they had the pieces in place to create something special, but sadly, each one of these just kind of missed the mark. However, if Japanese RPGs are your thing and you have an Xbox 360, well, definitely check them out. That's some of the Xbox 360 exclusives that I have in my collection, but there are a ton more. So if you'd like to see a part two, please let me know down in the comments below. Also, would you like to see me do the same thing for the PlayStation 3? Now that would be an interesting video because that console was heavily supported in Japan. There are a bunch of Japanese RPGs that we could cover on that. Be pretty cool to do. Let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Man, I have just barely scratched the surface of Xbox 360 exclusives, including Ace Combat 6, Amped 3, Chrome Hounds. I didn't realize Dead or Alive 4 only came out on the 360. That's kind of surprising. Also, a racing game called Indianapolis 500 Evolution, Kingdom Under Fire, Circle of Doom, and so many more. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching.